Aquinas' commentaries, they are, I mean, they're, they're a gold mine. They're really fantastic. And the, I mean, exegetically, um, theologically, they're, they're, they're quite extraordinary. But the difficulty right now is that within the current state of theology, um, the difficulty is that they're not really of particular interest to anyone. Um, because within biblical studies, um, Aquinas would sort of be the last person that you're that you're looking at because the discipline of biblical studies. We're sort of trying to get past, you know, all this medieval stuff and get back to, you know, get back to biblical times and what the Bible really said. And so, Aquinas is maybe the last person that, as a biblical scholar, you would think to to look to. And so, his his biblical commentaries are you know are largely ignored by by biblical biblical scholars. What you find though is that among students of Saint Thomas those who are interested uh, in him, it, they primarily come to St. Thomas with an interest in systematics. And this, you know, it's, it's usually the summa that, that they're after. So they're wanting to come at things from a, from a systematic standpoint. And as a result, usually if you're, if you're in systematics, you're not thinking, oh, well, it's, I'm just gonna read through some biblical commentaries. And so they tend to not really engage, engage them a whole lot either. And so you have these, I mean, really, quite extraordinary commentaries on scripture uh, that St. Thomas has left for us that they just because of the realities of uh, contemporary theology, they're not touched by anybody. And having benefited personally from them, uh, one of the things that you know, I hope to be able to do here in this in this context is to figure out a way to bring bring him and bring the you know what he has left to us. Um, to bring those into the conversations that you find within uh, modern biblical interpretation. This, this isn't far-fetched in any sense. Um, one, one example that I found so, so after reading Thomas's commentary on Galatians, I went and was reading uh, John Barclay's Paul and the Gift, which is a fantastic book and is really cutting edge within, within Pauline studies. One of the things that I found was fascinating is that I was reading through his, his work and just a number of times, points that Aquinas had made in his Galatians commentary, I'm finding Barclay making the exact same points in his, in his, new, his new book on Paul, which is really, again, cutting edge new, new stuff. Um, I'm just writing Aquinas over and over in, in the margins of his book. And I, I, know, and I went and I asked John about it and I said, you know, have you, have you had a chance to read you know, Aquinas on Galatians? And he's like, no, I just, I've been meaning to, but I've just never got around to do it. You know, to doing it. And I told you, you've got to do it because you're going to find that you have, you know, uh, if you know, going back to you know, 800 years, you're going to find you know, a kindred spirit. Um, so it's really interesting the the way that uh, Aquinas's commentaries can have a relevance for contemporary debates if we'll only go through the work of actually opening them.